What's going on, sixpackabs.com? It's Thomas DeLauer, the lead trainer and head nutritionist over at sixpackabs.com. All right, today we want to talk about something pretty darn interesting, and that's the world of testosterone. But I'm not talking about it from the general sense of, hey guys, let's get our testosterone as high as we can, and let's go wreck some shop in the gym and do this and that. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about the testosterone that already exists in your body and why you're not able to access it the way that you rightfully should. So what I want to talk about is what is called your free testosterone. And before I can go into ways that you can boost that free testosterone, I have to help you understand why so much of your testosterone is locked up inside your body and not able to be used. You see, testosterone binds to a specific protein, actually two proteins, albumin and something known as sex hormone binding globulin. It makes sense, right? Testosterone is a sex hormone. It binds to a binding globulin, sex hormone binding globulin. The whole point of testosterone binding to sex hormone binding globulin is so that it can travel throughout the body. It's like a protein that acts as the little bus that travels around your entire body. So that means you have one to 2% of testosterone that's there for doing the things that you want testosterone for, like going to the gym or like getting in shape or burning some fat and building some muscle and well, you know some other things. So let's talk about how you can release that because that's really what matters. You see that text hormone binding globulin is locking up most of your testosterone and it's just allowing it to travel and it's doing what it's supposed to do. You don't need to boost your testosterone levels, you need to unlock what's already there. So before I tell you the three things that I would recommend introducing into your lifestyle, let me tell you what you need to not do. Okay, the first thing I want you to slow down on is going overboard on fiber. Okay, now 20, 30 years ago, we were told that you need to be consuming this ridiculously high fiber diet from cereal grains and all kinds of stuff to help move on things along and flush out cholesterol out of the body. Those days are gone. Okay, we're not worried about cholesterol anymore. Science has proven that cholesterol isn't linked to heart disease and stuff anymore. We're not worried about that anymore. At least the majority of us are not. So we don't need to be loading ourselves with fiber from cereal grains when it's really not doing us a whole lot of good. Now plants are a different story, but studies have shown that fiber, high amounts of fiber, increase sex hormone binding globulin. So we don't really wanna have that in the equation. We want just enough fiber, maybe 20 grams per day, to help keep things healthy and to help keep our blood sugar down nice and low. Okay, the other thing that high amounts of fiber do is they can increase what are called endotoxins. And these endotoxins in the gut can trigger the creation of more of course, sex hormone binding globulin, which is locking up more of our testosterone. The other thing you need to chill on is the regular drinking, okay? A little bit here and there is no big deal, but binge drinking especially is where we start to see a problem. Alcohol has been related with high levels of estrogen. When we have high levels of estrogen, it means that we're converting more testosterone to estrogen and we're lowering our overall testosterone, which means we're lowering our net testosterone, our bioavailable testosterone as well. Now, additionally, alcohol increases the production of something known as the P45 enzyme. This P45 enzyme, again, has a direct correlation with sex hormone binding globulin production. Again, more SHBG equals less testosterone available for fun things in life. Okay, let's talk about what you can do. First and foremost, you want to be taking in some zinc, okay, whether it's from red meat or through supplementation. You've probably heard before that zinc helps improve testosterone, but the way that it does that isn't really known. The main thing we know about zinc is that it helps convert androstenedione into testosterone. So it takes a pre-hormone, and helps turn it into an actual hormone in the Leydig cells. So basically, once your brain communicates down to your testes that it needs to create testosterone, zinc plays a big role. So lower levels of zinc have been correlated with lower levels of testosterone. Now the other thing that zinc does as far as SHBG does is it reduces what is called the estrogen affinity. So SHBG binds to testosterone. It travels around your body and then it connects with other hormones. It connects with estrogen, and it gives some of the testosterone that's bound to the SHBG, and it gives it to the estrogen. So when the estrogen affinity of the SHBG is lowered, it means the SHBG doesn't really like the estrogen anymore. It just doesn't really hang out with that guy. So when it doesn't hang out with that guy, it means it doesn't give away the testosterone to it. So your testosterone is a little bit more reserved for your function, not being donated to estrogen, which is just going to give you, well, kind of that pec fat you don't want and the spare tire you don't want and all the things that are sort of the anti-male characteristics. So a little bit of zinc goes a long way. 25 to 50 milligrams is probably all you need. And a little bit of red meat helps a lot too. So now let's talk about vitamin D. You see, vitamin D is technically not a vitamin, it's a hormone. 
and it has some powerful effects when it comes down to your hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus is the control center of your brain, and it plays a big role in producing testosterone. In fact, it goes so far as saying it's the most important role. You have the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. The hypothalamus communicates with the pituitary, the pituitary communicates with the gonads, and the gonads create testosterone. So if you don't have a healthy hypothalamus and your vitamin D levels are low, you're going to have lower levels of testosterone. Studies have shown that just 3,000 IUs of vitamin D per day can play a huge role in reducing sex hormone binding globulin directly as well. So not only do you have the effect on the hypothalamus, you also have the effect directly on SHBG. Lastly, we have the world of boron. Boron is a trace mineral that, hear me out on this, it sounds crazy, literally comes from meteorites. I mean, we're talking like space crystal crazy nonsense, right? Well, wrong, it's a trace mineral, it's just a very rare trace mineral. And you can get boron, it's not that crazy expensive, but it does make a big, big effect within the body. Again, we don't really know a whole lot of the reasoning why, but when I reference this study, your mind is gonna be blown and you're gonna wanna become an astronaut so you can start sitting on some asteroids and harvest this stuff for yourself. Okay, so the other thing that we have to talk about before we reference the study is how, of course, boron affects vitamin D. So remember I mentioned vitamin D has a big effect on testosterone, well, boron also improves the synthesization of vitamin D. So meaning we have more vitamin D that's readily available for utilization, meaning a stronger catalyst for the hypothalamus to do its job. But here's where the stuff gets really cool. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Trace Elements in Medicine and Biology. It took a look at eight subjects that consumed 11.6 milligrams of boron daily for one week. After just one week, these men saw a 28% increase in free testosterone, directly correlated with a reduction in sex hormone binding globulin. 28% increase. But to make matters even better, there was a 39% reduction in estrogen. Almost a 50% reduction in estrogen. We're talking 39, I mean, we're getting there. That is a huge drop in that water retaining, nonsensical hormone that we don't want within our body in conjunction with an increase in testosterone. Pretty much describe the Greek god right there, right? That's what we want. So by implementing these three things and by avoiding the couple things that I mentioned, you can make a big difference in just how you feel and how you look and overall just what you look at when you look at food in the first place. You don't have to be sitting here trying to raise your overall testosterone levels. Honestly, that's a nonsensical way to go. Focus on unlocking what you already have inside you because we all have it. We just have to tap into it. As always, keep it locked in here on Six Pack Abs and I will see you in the next video.